Hello and welcome in another and at the same time the last episode of Nashorn build. Okay, so let me remind you what have I done previously and what is the starting point for this episode. After a long and challenging journey I have reached a place where all needed parts from Tamiya set are assembled. PE parts from additional sets are exchanged and some minor DIY parts are also made and joined with the model. As you see for your own eyes, Neshorn is shining piece of sparkling jewelry, which maybe look nice but is a real challenge to paint. This is why before painting I had to make some extensive cleaning work. First, I used the debonder to get rid of all unwanted C8 glue residues left from assembly stage. Next, cleaning itself. There was a lot of touching and handling involved in previous stage, so in order to get a good grip of a primer on a metal surface, I had to use a degreaser on whole model, not only metal parts. There is another step, but I will tell you about it in a moment. First, let's not waste time, come on and join me at my painting booth. I will tell you some more details while painting the base color of Nashorn. Ok, so the last step would be a separate priming of metal parts, which for some of modelers is a must have stage. Well, not for me. I'm working with photo aged parts for years now, but I'm always using one line of primers and I'm using them while working with all modeling material. I mean, plastic, metal, resin, wood, name it. Safest primers from Mr. Hobby have never let me down. I had never problems with paint scratching or metal surface, so I just skip this extra priming stage and I use two layers on whole surface with no distinction on the surface material. I have decided to go for common German tricolored camo consisting of dark yellow, dark green and red brown. All colors are from Tamiya and give a good base for further painting activities and enhancements. I wanted to get a lighter and discolored effect to camo points. Those three colors set together on one model can make of it a, sorry for comparison, a Christmas tree. I mean, already the number of details and funky stuff in this project is so big. So I just had to be careful not to go too far. The first step was to use a light grey surfacer followed by mahogany surfacer used also to build shadows and shades. Next I went to base colors, dark yellow on whole model surface and dark green with red brown to get a nice camo effect. All camo effects have been done freehand without masking. To go even deeper in this coloring process, I put highlights on camo, just in the center of its area leaving outlines a bit darker. I mixed both camo colors, let me remind you, dark green and red brown, with a dark yellow, let me remind you, used as a base color, as a highlighting supplement. It blended colors on the model and gave this nice faded muffled effect, especially to side armors where three colored camo could overwhelm the whole model.
Okay, so model is now base painted and even covered in gloss varnish. But before I start any detailed painting, I had to recover some directions from me where and what to paint. After the base painting, you can see that Camo covered and made all small details hidden and lost. To help myself, I used the dark brown wash in all detailed places. I have decided to show you how I work with vehicles. It seems easy, but not always is. But if you find it boring or you already know it, just jump to the next section. As you see in here, I show you things which might be helpful while working on vehicles. First, dip decals in the water, drain it with the use of a paper towel and leave on the side for a moment. Next, moist the surface for a decal on the model and gently slide or transfer it by tweezers to the model. Place it. Thanks to water on the surface and gloss varnish, decal should slide easily. Put softener on the top Place it again and leave it like this for a moment. If you want to drain liquid from around and beneath the decal, just use a cotton tip. I always put two layers of decal softeners, sometimes using the stronger one at the end, especially when the decals are a little bit thick. Okay, let's now ruin some work and add some chipping effects on nashorn surface. For light chipping I used yellow ochre color. At this stage I prefer to use a sponge chipping technique. Thank you. 
you see? Ruined. Now it is time for some more detailed work and getting some more context to chip it. I want to get this three dimensional effect on scratches and dents. This time sponge effect would be too random, this is why I switched to triple zero brush. The color I use here is a black gray. For making model more interesting, I have highlighted all the bolts on the model with yellow ochre. So logically, I had to do something with places where bolts flew off too. As I wasn't satisfied at all with the level of fading of the camo, I used some good old oils. They blended colors and covered the surface with this light multicolored matte mist. Okay, let's not stop and proceed with dirtying, bumping, rusting and all those nasty things we do to those poor models for some reasons. For rust effects I tend to use streaking rhyme, just like in here, but when I want to play with rust effects I rather would go for oil paints. I just leave small dots of wash in random places where the paint structure is torn to bare metal. Next, after a few minutes, I blend it gently with some brush moist with enamel thinner.
The last weathering addition to the model is set of pigments. They will give this dry mud layer which is in some places turn into loose dust. I also used pigments for binding the look of upper part of the model with the chassis and suspension colors. I have also added some speckling effects. I covered tracks with mahogany surfacer followed by black color loosely sprayed on the top. I have also blended in a mix of pigments with, with a use of track wash. When everything dried, I have cleaned the excess of pigments and dry brushed elements with stainless paint. Honestly, I was so afraid of fitting those tracks to the model. They look so flimsy and delicate. Fortunately, it was easier than I thought. For some reason, unknown to me yet, the sack of tracks on both sides look a bit different. It is strange, because I used the same amount of tracks links on both sides. Hmm. Anyway. Let's go and start to put together this puzzle box. As you see, I have decided to leave one ammo box closed and the other one opened with few shells inside. In one of previous videos I have mentioned that uh, you can use a modeling drill as a figure painting handle. Now I will show you how. I make a small hole in the bottom part of a figure. Then I take a regular pin and cut its head off with a sharp pliers. Next. Simply place the pin with a drop of CA glue in a hole in the figure. When it hardens, tighten the figure in the modeling drill. As you can see, you can do it also with the toothpick. And now even my figures are ready for action. When you are done with painting and finally want to fix a figure to the surface, just snap the pin or toothpick with the pliers and 
that's it. At this stage I had this small dilemma. At one hand, I just loved those details on this large gun, which I see as a crown to this model. On the other hand, model looked now a little bit too unbalanced. There were a lot of things going on in the back part of the Nashorn, but this was also making the part, front part, a little bit empty. Yes, let's go for empty. And this is why I have decided to add camouflage net and partially cover the barrel. Okay, I didn't tell you before, but from the beginning my intention was to cover the model with some bushes. It is just this last element combining all the previous steps together in one image, you can see here. So, what do you think? I wanted to show a story of some German unit fighting on the Eastern Front. Unit was already taking a part in few contacts with enemy, which left on it some minor fighting uh, marks. Also, due to the fact it is an unit best to use for ambush and distance fighting, it had to find himself natural covers in woods, ruins, holes. And oh boy, in places like this, paint scratch is the least of your problems, so you will have a plenty of them. Okay, now I share a few thoughts on this project. Well, I went too far, I suppose. At some stage it was no longer fun. I have got lost in the number of details I've planned to do and went tired with the size of planned work. Luckily, I have joined all those loose ends and managed to finish it to the end. Now, now when I look at this model, I'm happy. This is the most complex 135 scale project I have ever made and by the level of complexity I can only compare it to one 200 ship builds I make with use of Pontos detailing sets. And those of you who know Pontos sets know what I'm talking about. And now 
I will just leave you with this beautiful model and thank you for joining me again and see you in the another project which will come pretty soon. Ciao!